Hi everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. I'm so excited that we've got Carrie back behind the camera today because we have a special video for you. The 2022 Land Rover Range Rover, completely redesigned. There's a lot to talk about here. Now, as we just kind of have Carrie pan down the side of the vehicle, you're gonna notice it doesn't look that much different than it has in the past. You can tell that it's different, but it still looks a lot like what we've seen for the last 10 years. And not that that's a bad thing, that is until you get to the rear here. And one of the cool things, I have the hazard lights on right here. We notice when they go off, this area of the taillight is completely black. I love what Land Rover has done with that. It really gives it a nice clean look. In fact, if this thing had a black paint job on it, that would really look, I mean, it'd be completely murdered out. It'd be awesome. And what else is cool, I'm gonna have Carrie stay back here. Let's see if we can show you maybe on this side might be a little bit better but the new location for the backup lights. Something you won't get to see, but they're kind of in this area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop in real quick. I'm gonna put it in reverse and let you take a look at what that actually looks like. I'm hoping that we have good enough lighting to be able to see that. So, and you can hear the chimes back there. Carrie's back there, so it's picking him up. But hopefully you had a good view of that. So. Let's talk a little bit more about what you're going to find here. Starting price is about $105,000. Notice the size of these rims, huge, 23 inches and just perfect. I can't imagine, for whatever reason, I think black is the perfect color here. So that's a good thing. Now there's a couple of interesting things here that Land Rover has done that is an industry first. Number one, the frame is seven times stronger than any other in the industry. Also stronger than anything else in the industry. The motors that actuate these door handles that I can't put them in right now because we've got the engine running to charge the battery because it was dead in the showroom. So I can't do that right now, but you know how that looks. But here's the thing, when it's locked and you hit the unlock button on your remote, well, that looks like that, by the way, just in case you're wondering, you can see what all is there. But if you live in a really cold climate, these are known for freezing up, not only on these Land Rover vehicles, but on other vehicles as well. Now the motors that actuate and control these are strong enough, in fact, again, the strongest in the industry, the most powerful in the industry, to where if everything is frozen, they're not gonna be stuck in place. You don't have to worry about that anymore. Something else that Land Rover was going to do, but I believe it probably kind of government issues came in, maybe DOTD, I'm not completely sure. I haven't researched it. But originally Land Rover wanted to delete the side view mirrors. And so what would have happened is there would have actually been a screen on the interior right here that would have acted. And there's other vehicles that actually have this, but it would have had the side view mirror basically a camera right here on the inside that you would have looked at and I know there are vehicles that have that and apparently it's kind of hard to get used to so you do have your power folding side view mirrors right here turn signal indicator built in I think we can get a good shot of that even though it's kind of bright out here but overall as far as the exterior goes it's really not that dramatically different but what we're about to hop into is going to show you what really is let's take our first look into the interior okay so let's talk a little bit before we look into the interior. I kind of lied, didn't I? What about engine options? Well, you have the six cylinder that you can, you can get making about 400 horsepower. Then you have the turbocharged, this is the twin turbocharged V8 that makes 525 horsepower. And something interesting here, I'll have Carrie come in. Of course, you've got the cover right here. And if you're wondering, well, what does that look like? This is so easy to do, it's ridiculous. We're just gonna take that. We could take it all the way off if we wanted to, but I just wanted to give you a look at what it looks like under there the twin turbos, all the, everything, the plumbing and everything that's here and how that looks. To me, as a gearhead, I think it would just be a lot more cool to obviously have that accessible, just kind of my opinion in that. I know a lot of Land Rover drivers or owners are not necessarily going to open the hood and show that off, but some of us will. Oh, and one thing I do want to talk about here, watch this. I just want to show this real quick. One of my favorite features, but I really like it here. I'm just going to barely raise that up. I don't have to hardly do anything because of these very powerful hydraulic struts. I talk about how much I like those. Again, as a gearhead, for $141,000, I don't want to open this hood and have to ho hold it up and look for a rod and say, oh, where's the rod so I can manually prop the hood up. 
but these are probably some of the strongest I've ever experienced because of how aggressively they take the hood up kind of out of your hands. And you can tell when you just kind of push down on the hood like I'm doing right here, that those are really strong. There's a lot of pressure holding this hood up, just really kind of that high end more than anything else. Okay, let's talk a little bit about what else you'll find back here besides those smoked out taillights, blacked out taillights right here. It's pretty clean back here. All you have is the Land Rover logo right here and then Land Rover down here as well, or Range Rover, I should say, up there. And that's pretty much it. But I like the clean look back here. You would think for $141,000, you would not have an exposed rear window wiper back here. It is neatly hidden up here. And I hope Carrie can get a good shot of this for you. But here's what's interesting. When you look up on the top, not one, but two shark fin antennas. And that's because there is so much technology within this vehicle that one was not enough. So let's talk a little bit about technology and what you'll find back here. And really even more than that, comfort. So here's the thing. You have the split tailgate, nothing new to Land Rover. We've seen those on other vehicles in the past. But let me move these out of the way for just a second and show you a couple of things that are here. So you have two different options right here. You can use this area as storage. And what happens is you've got these pieces right here that you can move back and forth. All of them move. But what happens is, let's just say I put this one right here. Well, you have so much space right there where you could put something in there, a big bottle or whatever, something you don't want, a bottle of wine you don't want falling over when you're driving down the road spiritedly in dynamic mode. But if you need something bigger back here than that, look at that. You can make it even larger. And obviously, they're movable down here as well. You can change what you have there. But that's not all. It's a multitasker because here's what happens. Normally, what you would have is you wouldn't have these pads right here. This is an option, but you can use that as a backrest and sit up here on the split tailgate and enjoy some, well, tailgating, right? So, I have some video footage I want to show you of what this actually looks like because it's a little challenging to set up. But basically, you can put this in the position of the seats as I have done right here and sit right here. And Unfortunately, with the cargo cover being right here, it's a little bit hard for me to demonstrate that, but if it wasn't there, I'd be pretty darn comfortable. And here's what's really cool. I'll have Carrie come in and show you right here that you have the map light right there, kind of provide lighting down in this area on both sides, but notice that that's within the speaker. And the cool thing about that, again, the tailgating experience, the sound, the audio permeates the whole area where you are because of the location of those speakers and that sound just kind of traveling down and around the vehicle. That is really cool. And not to sound like an infomercial, but that's not all. So here we go. Let's keep going here, right here the kind of the nerve center of the rear of the vehicle right here. So here's what happens. You've got the buttons here for lowering the rear seats, the middle row seats right here. You can do that with these if you want to, or I'll have Carrie step back and let me show you first. I'm gonna push right there. So here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna push that and it's going to lower everything down at one time, maximizing cargo capacity, storage capacity, everything that's back here I really like that. And then obviously you can use these to pull everything back up. And the thing I like here, unlike some of the other three row SUVs we've reviewed in the past, you don't have to hold the buttons down. You just pull them one time, let go of it, and everything is gonna return back into place. And that's a good thing. That's what you would expect at the price point for which this vehicle falls. But I know the main thing a lot of you are going to want to know about is the interior beyond just storage and cargo capacity. So let's close everything up and we're gonna hop inside. All right, moving on to the main area for passengers back here. And we'll start with the door right here. Obviously, you have a decent sized door bin right there, so plenty of space. And what's interesting, I know Kerry can't show you this, but if he puts his hand on the inside of the door bin, there's actually a felt material right there. It feels very elegant and high end. And then as we move up to the controls, kind of the nerve center for these side, for these doors with the door panels here and the rear seat area, you've got controls for the seats right here. But what's interesting is this is the same way it is in the front seat. If you look at the controls for changing the position of the seats, 
you also see that it has the M for memory and then you have one and then go to that second button and you have two and three. So you actually have seat memory settings for these seats back here. The same thing in the front seat as you would expect. And then moving on to what's on the door panel on the top right here, there are quite a few interesting things here that you can do. You can control the door shades, you can control the shade for the panoramic sunroof, and obviously you can raise and lower the power windows. But what's interesting right here, I'll have him show you on his door. What I like about the shades on the windows is the fact that they provide basically complete coverage. A lot of the time, we don't see it go all the way to the end of the back of the window, and it just doesn't cover everything as much. So I must say, I'm really impressed with what Land Rover has done there. So, moving on to the inside of the door jam right here. If you look at the buttons right here, here's what will happen. I'm going to push my button down here, that very bottom arrow button. I'm going to push that and watch what happens here. Hands free, I just push the button and look at how quickly it gets all of that out of the way. So, while that's out of the way, let's see if I can do this. I'm going to hop inside here and I'm going to let Carrie move his seats out of the way and then I'm going to move mine back here to where they were originally so that I can show you how much leg space I have. Now the seats are coming back but you can obviously move them forward if you want to. I do have some space back here. Hopefully you can see that well on the screen that I have, well, a little bit of leg room. Obviously can't stretch out. It isn't that you couldn't fit adults back here. You can, but I don't know how long I'd want to sit back here. It's maybe a little bit better for the kids, but still not too bad. And then you have the buttons right here. I don't know how easily Carrie can show you what's over here, but we've got the USB port. We've got the buttons to move everything back and forth. And what is that? Well, let's push that and see. Guess what? Heated seats, third row heated seats. That's the first time I've seen that on a vehicle. And that's not all. You've also got the cup holder area right here, and it's probably easier to show from this side over here. You also have your own air conditioning vent if you're a rear seat passenger. That's really cool. And then you got the lights up here, the reading light to kind of provide for light back here for rear seat passengers. And I'll tell you what, it is extremely comfortable back here, even though, well, I don't have as much leg space as I would like to, but that's okay. It's a lot better when I, than what I've seen in some larger SUVs. Land Rover's definitely done a good job here, but that's not the only area where they've done a good job. Let me hop back out here. Now, something that is interesting here, let me just show from here while Kerry has his seat forward. When you move the seats up to the position where they are right now to gain access to this rear area, all you have to do is push that down arrow one time. But watch this. If I push it one time, it just only goes until I take my finger off of the button. You have to hold that down to get everything set back into place. For whatever reason, that's the way that that is. You have to hold it down until it completely finishes the entire function of the movement. So I'm going to let Carrie do the same thing and show you over there on that side just so that you can get a good look at it. But the good news is that it's not exactly slow in how it does that. And the cool thing is, I don't know if you noticed it earlier, when I moved those rear seats down, folded them flat, these moved up and out of the way if you're not gonna fold these down and then they return back to their position. Well, the front seat on the passenger side does the exact same thing when you're moving the seat forward from the middle row area. So, a lot going on there and Let's take a look here. We've got the fold down armrest and we're going to open this area right here, kind of a little storage area, a little bit more of that felt that I was talking about earlier. At least that's what it sound or feels like. Makes me think of. Now, there is an option to have USB ports in here. This particular model doesn't have that, but they are available. I think there's two more USB ports that can be right there. There are your kind of concealed away cup holders. Now, one thing I still want to see some of these car makers do is what do we have right down here? Let's take a look. That's gonna be kind of hard to see down there, but I think Carrie can get to it. We have the USB ports down there. We've got a couple of different options for connectivity, but I'm surprised that there's not three USB ports. You have a 12 volt right there, so you could put an adapter in right here to have a third USB port. But since you have seating for three people right here, you would think that there would be three USB ports. And then obviously we also have the power outlet right there that is usable, but 
that's not all that there is. There's more than that here. You also have controls for the heated seats as well here for these seats in the middle row. And then depending on what you want to do, you can push and or pull on these dials right here. Very easy to use. Very similar to what we saw in the Jaguar F-Pace that came out last year, 2021, with the change. Kind of a nice little elegant design around those. All right, real quick, we've got the panoramic sunroof open right here, or at least the shade open on that. Now, that does, this area does slide back, so that option is there. Now, just to give us better lighting, I'm going to close the power shade. You can see that in action. Essentially, we're going to see pretty much the same things on these door, these door panels that we saw in the rear area. Kind of unusual to see that, isn't it? There's a lot going on there. So I'll have Carrie still give you a quick look over there at what you have as far as the door panel goes. Obviously, there's going to be a lot more over here on the driver's side, but you know what that looks like, I would imagine, and probably don't need to see all of that. So he's going to show you a pretty deep door bend right there, have that felt material in there, kind of high end. Something that's interesting here, in my personal opinion, in order to open the upper or the lower glove boxes, the ignition has to be on. Kind of interesting. You would think that that wouldn't be that way. So there is the lower, but you would think the upper would just open. I don't know why it doesn't. Kind of an interesting thing. There's more of that nice material right there. And obviously you've got connectivity there, but quite a bit of space. And so that's a good thing. Nothing new for Land Rover here, but a lot going on. Very comfortable seating, obviously. You've got the leather seats here, and there are other options for seating materials. It's not just leather, so that's nice. Now, one thing that isn't here is you don't have the adjustable headrest with the speakers built in, but that is an option if that's something you want. So I'm gonna have Perry hop on inside the material or the interior here, and we'll show you what's going on here right up here above the clear sight and rear view mirror. There's your nerve center there, the upper console for controlling the power shade right there and opening that power sunroof. And then obviously right here, let's move this over towards Kerry so he can show you right there. There's your clear sight and rear view mirror. There is a mirror or a camera, I should say, in one of those shark fins back there. If you want the conventional style mirror, well, there you go. You can do that as well. Obviously that is an option. So when you have people in the back seat back there, you might not have the best view. That's where the clear sight rear view mirror comes in nice and handy. And let's talk a little bit about what you'll find here over on the dashboard. See if he can get a good shot of that for you. There is a lot going on here. We'll go through a few things and depending on what you go through, you can take a look at a lot here. I'm not going to go through everything, but just to kind of show you what all is here and how easy it is to get in and out of all of that. A very simple system to use depending on what your situation is. Well, that's easy. And then we'll go down here to the steering wheel. And we're going to have some pretty large shifter paddles right here. I like the fact that they are there. Now, my personal preference, I do wish that the shifter paddles didn't stay with the steering wheel. I wish they were mounted to the steering column instead so that they're just affixed and in a constant place the whole time. Tell me what you think about that down in the comments. What would you rather see? So obviously your steering wheel mounted controls here, pretty easy to figure out what's what there. Not major changes there really. We've seen this in some other Land Rover models over the last couple of years. We've also seen what we have right here with the updated infotainment system. It's the PIVI Pro. And I do like it. It's very easy to use, pretty, pretty self-explanatory. But what's interesting is when you push this, let's see if I can get you a sound here. So when you do that, not only do you hear the sound, but you actually kind of feel the click on the screen. And speaking of that, here's how you're going to change your driving modes. And depending on what mode you go into, the vehicle can change height. And see, see what's happening right here? It almost looks like it's looping. Well, that's actually letting you know that it's changing the ride height of the vehicle with the air suspension. There it's doing that again. And obviously it sits up pretty high. So that's pretty cool. You can also go here, see how it's showing you on the side there on the right side of the screen and just letting you know, well, that's what's happening with your vehicle. And then we can go right here to drive and make some changes here depending on what we want to do. 
that's really up to you. Pretty simple to figure out. And if you're wondering, where is that engine auto stop start feature? If you want to turn it off, well, I just showed you right there because there it is. I always like to turn that off. And brake hold mode, if you don't know what auto brake hold is, that's when you come to a complete stop. And when you take your foot off the brake, the brakes are still locked until you push the gas pedal. And ultimately, just a really simple system to use here. But there is a lot going on here. It shows you so much with the vehicle as far as what the vehicle is doing. Believe it or not, contrary to what non-Land Rover owners typically say, people do take their Land Rovers off-road. It's kind of funny how the Land Rover owners are not the ones who say that. So anyway, give you a little bit more of an idea on what's going on here. And here's something that's very interesting. When you're off-roading or maybe you're driving in the snow and ice, if you live in an area where you get a lot of that during the winter, this is showing you what's going on with the vehicle. The thing about it that I like here, it makes me think about how the traction control system works in these vehicles. If one tire starts to lose traction, it's going to completely take power away from that, send it to the other three, or if two of them lose it, it goes to the twos that are not losing traction. Kind of a neat thing there. Obviously, built-in navigation. I know a lot of people ask that question. That's kind of a no-brainer at this price point that you will have built-in navigation, but here it is just so that you can see it. Everything you would likely expect here and even more, but let's move on. One thing I do like here is the fact that you still have physical touch buttons and dials for air conditioning, for controlling the air conditioning and everything to do with that. It's really nice. You will have to push on some of these to get to what you want to, whatever you want to do. If you underneath the, let me close that just so you can see if you want to close and hide that away. Well, there's what you can do. And then we've also got our wireless phone charging pad right there. There we go. My phone came on right there just so you can see that and more connectivity right there. And then moving on, pretty obvious what you have here. Here's your shifter. There's your mode selector for your driving modes. You can work your way through that. I'll just go through and as you do that, let's do this real quick. As you do that, you might feel the vehicle changing height depending on what mode you go into. I'm not gonna go through every one of those and as has been the case in the past and continues to be the case, if you want the vehicle to select for you depending on driving conditions, well, there you go. You can still do that and you've got your hill start assist and descent right there also. And once again, if you want to hide away the cup holders. There you go on that. And you do have the armrests that still have the control right here for how high or low they are. So if you like that, well, that's there. And if you don't, well, that's there. And the lid for the console here. Now, in this particular console, you don't have the built-in refrigerator. That is an available option. This one doesn't happen to have it. But if it did, obviously, you'd see all of that right there. Pretty deep. In fact, that's so deep, I need to reach down there with my right arm to show you how deep that is. And if you're saying, well, that's not enough storage, guess what? There's more storage right here underneath those cup holders. In fact, there's even more connectivity down there. I don't know if we have enough light to show you that, but you do have quite a bit of storage in there in two different areas, depending on what it is you want to do. So there you go. Those are the things that Land Rover has changed for 2022. What do you think? One thing I did want to make sure I covered here. Let's go right here. We're going to push that and that's going to bring up some options here. We're going to go to cameras and I wanted to show you one of my personal favorite features. You can zoom in and look at your surroundings all around the vehicle. You don't just have to rely on that 360 degree overhead view. You can also see it from well, pretty much every view possible if you're in a really tight spot. Maybe you're doing a little off-roading for those of you who actually own Land Rovers who know that you do off-roading instead of those who complain about it who don't own Land Rovers. Well, there you go. That could be helpful in a situation like that. Or even if you're dealing with the jungle of parking lots in the big city where people kind of, well, do some strange things. And one thing that I wanted to do here, I'm going to go into reverse and I wanted to show you something interesting here. Watch this it has a camera washer. Bet you didn't know that was there. So you've got a way to wash your camera and keep that good and clean. So there's just so much here. I think Land Rover has done a fantastic job. Everything is nice and clear. You also have that off-road view right there that shows you what's going on with the suspension and everything of the vehicle, kind of telling you what's getting traction and what's, what's not. So 
a pretty neat system right here. Pretty simple to use, pretty simple to figure out. Okay guys, tell me down in the comments, what do you think about the 2022 Land Rover Range Rover? We've got it sitting up at maximum ride height, by the way, and keep in mind, I'm five foot 10, so that kind of tells you how high up this is. So, gotta say a special thanks to my friends here at Land Rover of Shreveport for loaning us this model for the day. We really enjoyed it. Thanks to Kerry for being able to get back in the saddle. We've missed him for a little while, but he's back on our channel here. Tell him if you want to see him get in front of the camera instead of being behind the camera. I'll trade places with him. Put some pressure on him because we want to see him try that out. Thanks for taking the time to watch today, guys. As always, I appreciate the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out another of the videos that's on the screen right now, and I will see you there.